company that I've seen nowadays. And again, informing parents, I'll just share another quick story. Um, I had a parent and their child, very smart, severely ADHD, could not control himself. And the mom just thought, no, he's gonna get better because I'm punishing him at home. And I remember one time he just, he cannot control himself. And she said, you know, I punished him. I had him carry cans of corn for 30 minutes. He stood there. We thought, that's not gonna cure it. That's not gonna help. And they don't realize that. So again, it's just informing them and letting them know this is what it means. And not just translating the term because it still means nothing. It's really taking the time. So that's why those arts when we translate take hours sometimes mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we really go explain, I mean, thing by thing. That's, they're passionate about that. <laughs> The only thing I want to um, uh, target or I want to focus on um, is when we're faced with uh, bilingual education, now we're looking more at changing models from 90-10 uh, to 50-50 and now even to transitional, going back to transitional models because of the AYP, because of the high stakes uh, testing. The only thing I want us to keep in mind when we're discussing this and we are confronted with making some some or uh, recommendation is basically what is the uh, long-term effects we're going to have not only in education but with the families we have to think about what's what's going to be the, the 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 impact our program is going to have to families and that ties to, uh, to back to susceptible to gangs uh, research has found that children who who are disconnected with the parents because of language especially in the middle school high school years were more susceptible to joining gangs, uh, young uh, Latina girls getting uh, uh, <coughs> pregnant. And so because they found that love and affection away from home because of disconnect with the language. So when we're faced with those uh, questions about what does bilingual education do for our children, not only think about it as academic, because it does have benefits, but also the families. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to the families at home when they cannot uh, speak to grandma and grandpa anymore at home, when they cannot speak to mom? And mom just smiles because I have a lot of cousins. Mm -hmm. And, and mom, uh, my nephew comes in and he told, he, he, uh, told his mom that he, he wanted to be an altar boy. And he was all in English. And my um, sister-in-law, this is my sister-in-law. She's from Mexico. She doesn't speak English. And she was just laughing and nodding. And after he, he walked out, I said, did you understand what he told me? He goes, no. <laughs> but he's in fourth grade. Aww. He's in fourth grade. And I said, he told me he wants to be an altar boy and that the teacher told him, his Sunday school told, uh, teacher told him that she's going to consider him. And she was like, oh my goodness. And I just started crying. I said, oh my goodness. The what we're doing. The communication, those important uh, milestones mm -hmm. in, in our children's life we're, we're missing because we're not understanding. And so let's keep that in mind when we're faced with the education of, of this children. And one of the things that that I, I see every day, I, my, my school is 94.1% Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> so that point one is very important. Um, is when, you, when I have that many children in my school that, you know, come from various different, <coughs> various, various types of homes, you know, we have socioeconomic status, and you know, we we are basically 100% low, so, low socioeconomic status. Our children are basically all speaking Spanish. They their parents only speak Spanish. However, we have different things that we need to remember. All a lot of our parents understand the stakes when it comes to. They want their children to learn English, and they not only because of they need to learn English. For, for the for the state assessments, but they need to learn English so they can help them translate, mm -hmm. and so that's and that's another important thing. Mm -hmm. um, we also know that there's the pride that we don't suppress Spanish because we're suppressing their home life, we're suppressing their culture, we're suppressing la raza, we're suppressing everything. So we embrace the Spanish language, and with that be, being said, I encourage my educators to embrace the culture. And it's not, you know, well, in September, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, so from September 16th to October 16th, we're gonna be La Raza. No, we embrace the culture year round, and it's not just by month. We embrace everything that they do, writing prompts. We had Dia de los Muertos, and we had altars in the hallway, and our children wrote about their lost loved ones, and they brought pictures, and they made, they made the masks. They did everything, and 
And so I've never seen so much vocabulary rich writing when, when we bring their home, their culture into the classroom. With everything that we're teaching our kids, I encourage our educators to bring some sort of reality to what they're learning so they can understand the connection from outside in. Because the things that we're teaching them in the classroom are incredibly important at when they go outside, but they, they don't understand why. So, and especially if we're pushing the English language, they have to understand why so they can go home and translate it over to their parents. So make sure that you understand that we're not just the depositors of information. We are building on the funds of knowledge that those kids already have. They translate hospital, they translate stuff with their doctors. Every hospital visit, every doctor visit they have, they have, mom has that child in there. They're translating. You know, they go to church, they go to church in Spanish, but they also go to church in English as well. So they translate a lot from there. And then can you imagine, you've read the, the Bible, I know we're supposed to separate church and state, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you know the Bible, it's, it's not written in social language. And so when they read the, the Bible in Spanish, they have that, they have some sort of academic vocabulary there too. So you understand that those, our kiddos, and I, I, I don't like to say those kiddos, our kiddos have funds of knowledge already that they bring into the classroom, that it's an educator's job to build on that knowledge and say, okay, this is what you brought, okay, this is how you can use it back home. This is how you can use it when you grow up. If, you know, your mom suffered that, she went to the social injustice, okay, this is how it's, how it's not right. Give them that, and you have history, you have writing, you have reading, everything, build on it. Very powerful words there, and, and you put together Soapbox. a nice resource <laughs> list. Uh, yes, I well, I, 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 we have that yes, over yes, here. Yes, it's over there. Don't forget to take uh, the, we have uh, copies of um, the presentation because I want to, uh, and when they're done, open it. Uh, so if you want to see what we talked about, for you to comment and remember, it's right here. Kathy is around if you can pick them up, and the resource. Um, here. There's a lot of resources that I think if you didn't uh, pick these up, right? Mm -hmm. Could you give them out? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No.